for advanced placement psychology, there are a whole bunch of psychologists that we need to be familiar with, and so this is the first of several uh, examinations of, and overviews of psychologists. Here's what we have to know from the history unit, nice long list of um, psychologists and others who influenced early psychology. First is Charles Darwin. He was an English naturalist, rode around on ships uh, uh, around the world, wrote a book called Origins, Origin of the Species. He wrote of evolution and natural selection, the idea that uh, traits are somehow adaptive for an organism and those traits get passed along to the surviving uh, members of a particular species, so traits are adaptive. He influenced the early school of thought of functionalism and definitely influenced the current evolutionary perspective of psychology. William James established the new science of psychology in America. He attempted to combine religion and psychology. He was the first, is considered the first psych teacher in the United States. He wrote the first psych textbook called Principles of Psychology and was independently uh, a portion of the, uh, the co-creator of the James Lang theory of emotion. So he's the James in the James Lang. G. Stanley Hall was the first APA president, that's the American Psychological Association, he studied childhood psychology and evolutionary psych. He also studied racial and gender differences, as well as religion and psychology. He talked about the Sturm und Drang, or the storm and stress of adolescence. He was a eugenics fan, and so we'll get into that in a little bit. And he mentored many other psychologists. Dorothea Dix was a social activist, said that government should play a role in social welfare, and she helped create the first mental asylums and nursed both sides, soldiers on both sides, during the U.S. Civil War. Mary Whitten Calkins, philosopher and psychologist, studied for a Ph.D. Uh, at Harvard under William James, but Harvard would not accept her into their program. She could only have a, uh, an outside-looking-in kind of a, a, an approach to her studies. Her focus was on the self, or self-psychology. She was the first female president of the American Psychological Association. And to follow her was Margaret Floyd Washburn, was the first woman to earn a doctoral degree in American psychology. She earned that in 1894. And she was the second woman to serve as the APA president. Sigmund Freud, he, of course, was psychoanalysis, the theory of mind, founder of the talk therapy by the same name, and considered the father of modern psychology. Most work by others in the early part of the 20th century was a reaction to his theories. He included, among other things, the focus of the unconscious mind and dream interpretation. Ivan Pavlov was a Russian physiologist. He studied digestion and salivation in dogs. He discovered the principles of classical conditioning, the unconditioned stimulus in response being conditioned with uh, another uh, external stimulus, and uh, we'll take a look at that in another video. And you may be most familiar with him by the, the term Pavlov's dog or dogs and bells and salivating. Jean Piaget, Swiss, develop, Swiss developmental psychologist, mental and cognitive development. He had a four-stage theory. He said that uh, hopefully people will be able to go through all four, but we start with the sensory motor, the pre-operational stage, then concrete operations and formal operations. Key terms with uh, his particular point of view was the schema, assimilation, accommodation, and he also developed the clinical method of research. Carl Rogers was an early humanist. People geared, uh, are born geared toward growth. Uh, he moved from the patient-oriented therapy of Freud to a client orientation, so he changed the dynamic of uh, what therapy was all about. So he created what was known as client-centered or person-centered therapy, and because he was a humanist, he focused on the concept of phenomenology, the idea that you had to understand the individual's personal perception, interpretation, and point of view of any set of circumstances. B.F. Skinner was, a primary, was the primary behaviorist. He said thoughts and feelings were not important, only behavior. He was uh, creating the ideas uh, that are now found in operant conditioning. He built on the work of Thorndike, the key principles of reinforcement and punishment to modify behavior. He created the operant conditioning box. He hated when people called it a Skinner box. And there is much science and research to back up his views on the effectiveness of the behavioral point of view. John B. Watson, another early behaviorist, but he was involved in classical conditioning rather than operant. 
And so what he did was he tried to create fear when using those two metal bars clanging together and with little Albert. And with little Albert, uh, you know, he became uh, fearful of the bunny and the rat. And then he generalized that fear to a number of fur, white furry based uh, creatures and objects. After his career in psychology, he left psychology and went into uh, advertising. And he added the idea of sex to help sell things. So um, big time import there for how we now view advertisements. Then there was Wilhelm Wundt, 1879, Leipzig, Germany. You have to know that he was the guy who created the first psychology lab. He was a structuralist, and his key idea was introspection, the idea of a person being able to describe a, an experience that they were having. Um, was, that was his key technique. Sadly, uh, not that many people were particularly strongly verbal, and that's one of the reasons why introspection did not work. Within the methods unit, there are no specific psychologists, so we don't have to worry about them. This ends this section.